Today, we are talking about how often you should weigh yourself. Hello, I am Sheila Veers and I help women to break free from yo-yo dieting and self-sabotage so they can rock their dream body and feel amazing in their skin. And today, we are going to talk about how often you should weigh yourself. I get asked this question all of the time, especially from my women who are looking to break free from that yo-yo sort of approach of like self-sabotage and the shame game and all of the other stuff that we mentally sort of abuse ourselves with when we set physical goals for ourselves. And so obviously like for many women the scale can be such a triggering thing. I talk a lot about being stuck in body jail or you know being trapped or imprisoned by this little metal and plastic thingy because that's really all the scale is, right? It's like this number that we see that can make or break our day and it has such control over some of us. I know especially myself back in the day it would either make me feel super high and happy and like on top of the world or if I saw a number that I didn't like from the day before or the week before then it would totally blow my day and I would feel like a big blob. I want you to start recognizing that there really is no one right answer across the board on how often every single person should weigh themselves. It's really about what feels good to you and what helps you to create positive momentum. So you can weigh yourself every day, you could weigh yourself every week, you could weigh yourself once a month or you could never weigh yourself at all. It doesn't really matter. What you want to do is to start setting goals from a mindset of self-discovery and self-love versus from a mindset of shame, not good enoughness, or when I get there, then I will be happy. Because I promise you, and this is something I learned myself and I've worked with a lot of women who have experienced this as well, that you can set these arbitrary goals. You can say, I need to lose 10 pounds in two weeks or I need to you know, hit this specific number so that then I can feel confident in my body or so that then I can you know, look good in a bikini or whatever it is. But here's the thing, every single time if you are setting goals based on an arbitrary number, I guarantee when you get to that number, you're not going to feel the way that you want to feel unless you do the inner work, unless you truly feel good in your body right now on the way to whatever physical goals you set for yourself. And I think this is something that is a lot easier for men, you know, if we're going to generalize here, it's easier for men to be more analytical about the scale, you know, to get on the scale, see whatever the number is, record it, and then continue on their journey of, of you know, milestones that they're setting and, and specific tasks that they're setting up for themselves, like working out, drinking a certain amount of water, you know, getting in a certain amount of protein or whatever other milestones that they're setting for themselves, hitting those consistently and then using weight as one of the many tools that they're using to track their progress and their results. So if you can approach the scale from that kind of a mindset, then you know, weigh yourself however often it feels good to you. And here's the thing, the little caveat that I want to put in there, especially for women. If you're weighing yourself on a weekly basis and you have things like hormones and you have, you know, all of these different factors that actually factor into what your weight is, you need to kind of take the weight as like with a grain of salt. So it matters so much whether or not you went to the bathroom before you weigh yourself, whether you're about to start your menstrual cycle, um, how much you sweated the day before, how much water you drank, how much sodium you had, um, how much stress you're under, how much sleep you got. There's all of these different factors that come into play that will affect what your weight says. And so, you know, I, I've tracked before, it's really interesting. Again, just from a place of self-discovery, I was interested to see what the scale would say. And my weight will vary like anywhere from four to six pounds from day to day and from, you know, the beginning of the day to the end of the day, depending on what I eat and how much I slept and all of these different things. And so the scale can be helpful for tracking progress, but if you get triggered by it, it is not going to be helpful for you. And if you've been in my community for any time, you've heard me talk about how much our emotions actually affect our physical body and its ability to operate optimally. So if you are getting on the scale and it's triggering you, it's making you feel really down or depressed because you're not seeing a number that you want to see, that's actually creating a stress response in your body. And when your body is under stress, it doesn't feel safe and so it doesn't 
focus on things like metabolism, digestion. It doesn't release the excess water and things like that that it would when it does feel safe. Because think about it, your body's whole focus is to survive. It doesn't care about your weight loss goals. It doesn't care about whether you feel really lean or not. It just wants to keep you alive. I mean, it makes sense that if your body is feeling stressed out, if it feels like it's in danger, you know, if you're consistently weighing yourself and then getting stressed out about it, then of course your body's gonna like hang on to extra water weight and everything else versus if you were to either not weigh yourself or if you were able to get on the scale and not have it affect you mentally, then your progress would continue on. You would create that positive momentum. So this is where you really just have to check in with yourself and awareness is the first step in positive um, momentum and, and creating the results that we want. If you, if you are doing certain things, if you're using certain tools that help you to feel good, then keep doing those things. But if you're using certain tools and getting on the scale being one of them and it's triggering you to feel bad, it is not helpful. And so when I have clients who come to me who have maybe been weighing themselves regularly and getting depressed about it, a lot of times we actually take a break from the scale so that we can give your body some space to breathe and to not be so focused at this micro level and just focus on the more general, bigger umbrella type things that you can track, like how much water are you drinking? You know, are you getting in your workouts consistently? Are you eating, you know, your greens and so forth? And if you're doing all of those things, then the results will come and you don't need to track at such a micro level unless it's something that you truly enjoy. So I hope that makes sense. I would love to hear from you in the comments below. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and share it with someone you know would benefit from this message.